This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, so let me start with the logging here. Logging is very much essential part of uh, running an application or running into the operating system. Logging is like uh, logging the information, logging the logging the flow or how the operating system is running. Any any application, if it's running, it used to throw an information like any kind of info or any kind of warning, any kind of error as well, it used to throw. So those all the information which a particular application is throwing, it goes into a file. And that going into a file, we are calling here as a logging. Logging means storing those particular logs or those particular messages into a file. So it automatically happens actually. We are not we are not supposed to do anything extra here right now. So let me log into the system. Uh, where log? All these logs are related to system logs. So all logs you will be able to find out in slash where slash logs log so in this you are able to see these many different type of logs we'll go to the log one by one anaconda it's a directory okay let me go to where log itself I don't have permission to see all the logs. So for that, I, I need to be an admin or I need to have a privileged sudo user. So for that, I will type sudo. So all these things are, uh, these are all storing the logs. Uh, I think these are logs when uh, I was installing the system probably because uh, this anaconda whatever it's mentioned here it runs whenever the system installs at that a particular that particular operating system so that log all the logs are related to that let's see what is the audit saying mm -hmm. Audit log log. Okay, let me check what is there. Hmm. So suppose somebody wants to do an audit, like what all permission has been changed or who all have been logged in or if anything, any uh, audit related work, if somebody wants to do, can do from here can come back and check the logs what are all things has happened overall how many uh, user ids has been changed or has been added all those information can be checked here boot dot log whenever system is booting uh, you might have seen uh, the this kind of log floating through. Something like that it comes, correct? Whenever system is starting. And after that, uh, after finishing of this message, your uh, login window comes. So uh, there are two things for showing all these logs. 
two things means whenever a system is not performing well or whenever you have a problem whenever something is not working any application is not working so for that purpose you are going to come back here you are going to see the logs hey what logs has been thrown what error has been thrown by that particular application why it's not working and then you will start your debugging and you or you will start your resolving the issue first you need to think that why it's not working if you are able to resolve then it's okay if not then you need to come back and see the logs here we can we can see the we can see the yesterday's example itself we were not able to connect to that particular uh, operating system sorry outside uh, outside world we were not able to connect because it was a first case we have seen that it was not having ip itself so we have assigned the ip so if it's not having ip it will if it's not having ip and we are trying to access something it will not show anything at all it will not show any warning any error because being not having an ip in a system is not a warning is it's not an error also it's just an state normal state whether ip can be ip cannot be so in the in those some cases you need to understand what is the requirement minimum requirement of that particular system and uh, whether you are fulfilling all the minimum requirements or not even though if you are fulfilling all the minimum requirements and then not working then you need to come back and check the logs here so boot log suppose your system got stuck or a system uh, a system startup it's giving some error or some warning and you're not able to see so you can log in to the system and come back here and see the log if any error is coming it will it will throw there here itself and uh, btmp log let's see what it says mm. it doesn't have anything i am also not sure what the btmp log says currently cron cron is actually uh a scheduling job system through that you can schedule a job in your near future and you can execute that even though if you are not available in front of your system so for for that this cron is uh, uh used and uh, all those logs related to that particular uh, whether that has run or not run or it's delayed or what is the reason that it's delayed or not run or anything anything related to that particular cron job you'll be able to find out here i uh, will see that cron job because that's uh, in our uh, upcoming requirement that if you want to schedule some of the jobs how we can do that so we'll see that as well d message d message is a log and d message is a command as well so whatever you see here the same thing you can see here also so most of the logs let me explain it's a ring buffer a ring buffer means ring buffer means uh, in computer we have an area in computer uh, suppose this is the file on which suppose this is the 5 mb file 5 mb
so here what is the meaning of this and why i brought into this uh, picture why i draw this picture here is uh, i want to make you understand what is called ring buffer and how the logging works actually in the context of ring buffer so suppose this is a file of uh, d message itself when uh, this file is here you can see that this is a d message file so let's see that uh let's say that this is a d message file and it has uh, 5 mb of uh, storage space so i have just assumed that this is a 5 mb it's it doesn't mean that it has 5 mb only okay so suppose d message is okay what the d message stores d message stores any event uh, reaching to the kernel related to any driver, any system startup as well, or any device as well. Let me show you. When your system is starting, it, it has to throw all these logs and uh, every log has its own information like uh, kvm clock is getting set up and dma is getting start uh, set up here dma uh, high high mem this is low mem and the normal and not sure what this node is setting up yeah dma zone a further dma zone and then it's it's initializing the timer again power management is happening here i think it's an ethernet no, it's not an Ethernet. Probably it's from the BIOS. Maybe it's coming from. Now after that, KVM is getting booted. So several things is there, which uh, you can see. Mm, device related information. Uh, it's it's full of device related information, like uh, PCI bus uh, or when when it's. Uh, uh, Allocating the memory when it's getting utilized, what is the registers, all the things, and it's not only only about the PCI device. It's it's about all the devices. You can see USB core here. Uh, we'll we'll come back to this log again when we look at that how we are installing a driver or uninstalling the driver. At that time, we'll come back here again. So you can see all the USB logs. So if you are plugging in any any device, here the log will come. Okay, let me exit. And uh, let me give an example. Let me show many show an example. Uh, tail is a command which generally I use to display the tail information of a particular file tail information means last five to six lines but i will use with hyphen f option so it it keeps on it keeps on giving me the last five lines as soon as the files get file gets modified where log the message okay so this is the last logs you can see that and now in that let me add a usb device and we'll see that whether uh, we are getting any logs in that or not devices optical okay let me add this centos dvd okay it's just mounting the dvd and mounting so that may not throw the error or any logs if any hardware is getting connected at that time it should throw so let me see how i can change the hardware mm -hmm. it's all graded out I will not be able to change any hardware. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's all graded out.
uh, whatever I'm trying, it's just enabling and disabling that particular device. Uh, here, uh, in this virtual machine, as soon as system runs, uh, I will not be able to remove or install any of the device. So anyways, we'll come back here in this uh, D message logging system. Again, whenever we do install a new driver or remove the driver to see whether uh, the logs are coming or not. Okay. In your uh, real uh, PC, if you are trying in your real, real laptop, you can plug in any USB drive and you can see uh, it, it will throw all the logs that what is the vendor ID, what is the device ID and several, several more things. And the message dot old, yeah, I have not finished my previous. Yeah, so you know what is the D message is for here currently. Now, as you know, D message, let me uh, explain here. Uh, suppose this is uh, your system is turned on and uh, this is getting filled up uh, with the logs. Your device is having any error and device is throwing continuously log, and this your 5 MB file is filled up here. So in some cases, what happens like, it starts writing again from the top. What I told you, it's a ring buffer. The ring buffer means, this is the starting point. And this is the ending point. So to start from here, it will keep on writing, keep on writing, keep on writing. It will reach here. It has it's full right now. And then once again, it will start writing again from from here. So when it will start writing again from this start point, it means it's overwriting its old data. Correct. So in some cases, whenever your this uh, this is full, whenever your D message is full, it's a start writing again from the starting place. So that's what the meaning of here. Uh, I mean, uh, ring buffer that it starts writing again from the starting. So in some cases, you may not get the log, you may not get the previous log. If your system is getting flooded with the logs and your device is having throwing so much of error and your system is getting full with the logs, you will not be able to see that. So while looking at the D message, please check if your system is good or healthy or if it's not throwing any log. It's not throwing or it's not flooding with the logs, then go ahead and check. If it's flooding with the log, probably you need to work it out how to remove the device, how to remove the driver so that it doesn't flood the log, flood with the log, and you can uh, look at the debug messages and you can resolve that. Okay, so this is done. I can explain without opening. Let's see. So generally, um, in most of the cases, we are using we'll be using D message, cron, and uh, there is no syslog. I'll see where is the syslog. Syslog also you'll be using. D message dot old. Here we can see the D message also dot old. It means that whenever this file is full, it's going to copy the file. It's going to copy the content in dot old file and it starts writing again from starting. So in this case, you can find it out uh, D message dot, uh, the old D message log in D message dot old file. Firewall D is the logs like uh, whenever you turn on the firewall, so what are logs, it's one to three, uh, it's going to throw. Grubby prune debug, maybe it's uh, grub debug messages. Last log, maybe it's the last logging logs, last login logs. Mail log is uh, in locally also there are several uh, several uh, communication happens through a local mail in this system itself. 
that uh, there is a kind of mailbox and there is a kind of uh, like uh, people who used to send the mail here people is like people means any application so for any information they used to send the mail for that i'm able to do this or not accordingly messages is also messages qmo hyphen ga i think qmo it's a virtual machine which is installed which might have been installed or maybe this is came because i am running this into a virtual machine and that's the reason of this log <clears throat> rhsm i need to look at that what is rhsm Oh, it doesn't have anything. Okay, no problem. Let me check what is in the secure also. Okay, it's spam logs. Spam log is like uh, login logs, and what role I'm going to do with that? Like you can see, how many session has already been opened, and who has who has opened those sessions? Pam <clears throat> um, uh, is uh, the full form of the Pam is P. I don't remember. AM is like authentication authenticator module. So it gives us a window to modify or to change the authentication method. So that who is logging. we can set some policy for that for that purpose those logs comes here the spooler i'm not sure tally log i'm not sure tuned well, let's see what is tuned whether it's uh, over interest or not Mm, okay so it's about the system performance and the services which is running like if any daemon is running here or any services is running and uh, they are trying to throw some logs they will throw here so i uh, mean by default uh, they are uh, going to tune something so all those logs comes here WTMP. I'm also not sure, and this is not coming in now. This is WTMP. It's not coming in a normal text format, so I'm not sure that what this is for. Em dot log is so what are all commands we have run yesterday? Those are logs are going to come here. you can see all okay it's gone so you can see which are all packages packages have been updated by a particular user it is listing so you have to log source that one so this is the log for everything not for everything for most of the things Where is this log now? Well, log, this log. It's not here. Ah, uh, okay. So in Ubuntu, it used to be this log as well. So probably uh, here we are uh, looking at different, different, uh, different, different files. Maybe this log might have got distributed in different, different files. so our interest would be d message in some cases and in some cases we may look at the boot logs we may look at the firewall d logs 
but depending upon the requirement and suppose if you are going to install any new package suppose like you are installing uh, apache for running a website or web server so you will install the apache and uh, after installation it will again create some extra files to store the logs that who is accessing the website what is their ip and how it's accessing the website so all those logs apache stores so that folder or that file will automatically get gets created here like in the var log so related to an application also we can have a file and uh, what are all things that particular application is doing the log comes down in the same file you need to come back and see what logs has been created if any error is coming Mm -hmm. No time synchronization. There is a server for time synchronization that's called NTP, and that runs internally in uh, all the Linux system. Through that, it fetches the time from the internet and it synchronizes. So let me see how we can run that. Do I have anything? No. It picks up the date from BIOS, okay. Let me see, do we have any packages or not? Related to NTP here. We don't have internet. Yeah, we don't have internet. We don't have IP. So you are seeing that how I'm able to see that internet is not coming because it's all throwing that uh, website is not found. Then I tried to ping and Google is not pingable here. So I looked at the IP and it shows that uh, the LAN is up. It means this shows that LAN is up. It means uh, my LAN is connected, but uh, it doesn't show me any valid IP. So it means IP address has not been assigned. So I'll, now I'm going to run this command dhclient-v and then my uh, Ethernet uh, name. That is ENP0S3. I got it from here. So that uh, if I will give this command, it is going to fetch the uh, it is going to request the uh, IP from the DHCP server, which is running here locally in my uh, in my router. Because why from router? Because I might have set the settings for bridge. Let's see what IP it takes. Yeah, we got the IP7 again, what we have got yesterday. I'm able to ping Google as well here. So it means I will be able to install this NTP. Just one second.
You can see different different servers here, and uh, probably from uh, these servers only, it's going to fetch the law. Sorry, not fetch the law. It's going to sync up the time. So you are running a server, obviously, if uh, your BIOS, your local uh, desktop, uh, whatever you are running doesn't have the time, then your uh, system will not be able to fetch the correct time. And hence, you will not be able to get the good time, I mean, the running time. Here, my laptop is having a good, uh, correct time. And uh, hence, whenever, I'm, uh, whenever I have installed this operating system, this virtual box, at that time, it got the time from the BIOS. BIOS uh, the BIOS checks the time, what is in the host system. And from there, it has got the correct time. So suppose if you are in an organization and uh, you doesn't know the timing, whether it's correct or not, then you can sync up the timing. Yeah, we have NTP. No servers can be used exiting. So it seems like NTP service is not running. So let me restart the NTP service here. Mm. There's nothing related to NTP. Okay. Let me check the YUM logs. You can see I have updated and installed uh, three. I have installed NTP and which in turn has installed NTP, NTP, NTP date, autogen, hyphen, lib, ops. Okay. So like this, you can check on which date and which packages have been installed or updated. Let me see help. I'm not sure what is the command for that actually, because generally I don't use. Thank you. 
NTPQ, NTPDC is here. Okay. Okay, let me run a command. Here NTP is by default delayable and uh, all the time it shows. And uh, it is synchronized as well. Maybe as I have installed, it might have been synchronized. Now it's running. No, it's still not running. What other things I can try? Oh, is it like if I install and start the service, it's going to sync with the time, maybe? So as soon as I have started the service using system CTL, not restart, I've run three commands. Okay, what are all commands I have run? You know that I can see all the commands here. When I type history, it will show me all the commands. Okay. I have run this command sudo systemctl enable ntpd. So it is going to enable uh, the ntpd control from the system controller. System controller is a kind of controller where we can uh, enable or disable some of the services and start or restart, start or stop. And the difference in between enabling and disabling a service or starting or stopping a service here is uh, let's say you are. Uh, Consider that you have plug in, plugged in a device at somewhere. Uh, somewhere means like, uh, how do I say? You have plugged in a device in your, in your computer, let's say. And you have a switch to turn off that particular device or turn off that particular device. So plugging that device here, it means that it's got enabled and Turning on that device, it means that, that service is started. So whenever you say it's enabled, it is not mean that it's going to run always. System is running. So for that, you need to start that particular services. And there is another method for the services to start or stop. Let me see if it works here. So, only network is here. Okay. Hmm. ATC init.d slash networks, probably things has been changed here in uh, the CentOS, in new CentOS. And in Ubuntu and all, it's a bit uh, thing, uh, it's in another way that all the all the system uh, services used to be here in init.d file. And uh, here it's only network. So I, I, I have checked the network uh, status. It shows uh, this information. And uh, I can restart this uh, service. I can uh, shut down this service. All those things I can do from here. Since I need network, I will not shut down from here. So as soon as I have run these three command, uh, after that NTP service has started running at, and it has synced with the server. 
so that might be the reason we will not be able to say any difference at all that what is the what is the time or what is the difference in before syncing the time and after syncing the time okay so we'll move on to the next topic printer services and task automation printer services uh for printer there is a service called cups cups if printer is not working either you need to install the cups service and you need to check what is the status of that cups service let me check what is here hmm okay do we have anything like that or not it has lots of things yeah got it cups is going to install several thing in it Uh, which are all required so one package may have several dependencies and uh, which it's doing can anybody tell me that uh, if i'm installing one package why uh, uh, why several packages are getting installed in this or in any system if anybody knows can reply me Okay, so nobody knows. So let me reply. The packages are dependency packages, sir. Mm hmm. Dependency packages. What is the mean? Different dependency packages here means what is the meaning of that? These packages are different. Sorry, these packages are dependent on that repository. Not on the repository. Let me give an example here. Hmm. Suppose I've installed the cups. Um, this is the list of metadata from the first class or from the second class. From the second class, probably everybody remembers that I have told about the metadata and all the packages informations are present here. Okay, I hope you are able to recollect the data from there. So these are all the packages. Packages uh, are sitting there or the information is sitting into this metadata. Here metadata file is stored. It has all the information of the packages. <clears throat> Suppose this is CUPS. CUPS is a service which is going to run for the printer drivers. Suppose if I'm uh, installing the CUPS service, but if I don't have the driver, or if I don't have the font, or if I don't have the printer list, then there is no use of it. Cups is going to work with printers. For that, I need to have printer drivers. For printing the service or for printing anything, I need to have several fonts supported. Not only that, I need to have several things as well to, uh, to work with Cups. So it will have several dependencies on it, like if you want one thing to work, you need to have several more things in place to work. So that's called dependency here. Like if you want one person to work, definitely there are several person has to be in place. Like, like uh, in a school, if you want a student to be teach to be te to be taught, 
then definitely a teacher has to be appointed and if you are holding a teacher then definitely a principal of that particular some somebody has to be the principal of that uh, the school to manage all the teachers so for these are all the prerequisites and these are all interdependent and if you want to teach a student definitely there has to be uh, some set of uh, uh, rules which needs to be followed like you need to have pre a primary resource like bench you need to have you need to have uh, seating arrangement you need to have blackboard so all those things are prerequisite which are all inter interdependent so if i'm keeping one thing all the remaining thing has to be in place so similarly here also if i'm installing cups where is that cups package let me see okay it's not listed here right now it has gone it might have gone above i think yeah so whenever cups i have installed it depends on all these packages and that's why it's installed all the things hmm let's see services it has got in any dot d no it is it hasn't got in any dot d Hyphen hmm. L option gives me the list of all the all the services. You can see all the services running here. I have just now enabled the cups services. You can see that here. I have enabled and started as well. Yes. So cups is here. And uh, it's active and running. You can see that. And before this, what other services I have started is NTP, correct? Okay, we'll see that NTP again. Yeah, here it says NTPD services here. Which is running. Okay, with related to NTP, let me run uh, one more command and see whether it's again syncing or not. NTP Q space hyphen P. Hmm. It has pinged the, all the things and it has got the IP and uh, not IP, it has got the time and it throws me the difference as well in terms of what is the delay, how much delay I'm having to get the time. And there are several more commands. You will be able to find it out in the internet, like how I can sync up with a particular uh, server or a particular uh, system by modifying this file. NTP.com. You can modify some of the. I have done that. I can modify some of the parameter here, and I can uh, I can start uh, utilizing other servers. And there are several methods, like if I want to keep a key. And if I want to be a NTP server, like suppose if you're running a local system and you wanted to set up an NTP server, that also you can do from here. So that other people who are all into your domain or into local to you can get the time, date and time, correct date and time from you. 
what i'm trying to explain here is suppose you are working in a system or in a place where it's all intranet intranet means you are not connected to the internet and there you all the pcs are very much old uh, which doesn't have the which doesn't have the bios in place and which may not uh, get the ip from the bios sorry not ip the date and time from the bios so in that case you will have to run a local ntp server which can give you the time whenever any system comes up and ask about the date and time you are already running the ntp server and you can redirect that particular client to your let me give it a diagram here first this is your machine suppose you are running an ntp server and this is our client uh, which has bad date and time so what you will do is here it's running an ntp server in this in uh, this conf file you uh, you are going to install uh, this package ntp package here and after installing the ntp package in that conf file you are going to edit to make this server as a server i mean this this system as a server and you are going to run the command which will fetch the i fetch the time and date and time from this ntp server but there is one thing which i have told wrong here you need to tell me what is wrong something wrong i have told you need to identify me let me repeat what i have told some time back you can identify now again as as well that uh, for ntp there will be a server there will be a client and if you are in internet where you don't have internet connection in any of these port machine you are going to install uh, the uh, you are going to install ntp package over here and after installing the ntp package here you are going to you need to install the ntp server package here again and you need to configure this as a server and uh, in this client in this client you will need to have give the i have given the ip in the conf file of this server and after saving this file you need to restart the services and after restarting the services you need to have given to update the date and time of this client so in this i have told about uh, installing the package and before that i have mentioned that you don't have internet connection so i'm contradicting these both two sentences So can anybody tell me that how I can do that if I don't have internet and if I want to install the package? Local uh, repository configure. Local repository how? I mean, uh, okay, yeah, local repository we can do. There are two types of local repository. We can uh, go ahead with one is uh, it comes along with the DVD itself. we can set up that dvd as a local repository or you can set up a local repository somewhere but for that you need to do lots of work it's not so easy to set up a local repository okay and yes yeah. somebody has replied me that by rpm we can run that yes if you want to install a package you need to run hyphen sorry rpm space hyphen ivh and that particular package name the full rpm file name which i might not have shown you guys here how to install an rpm package okay i'll go out from here rpm space hyphen uh 
ATC Jam Where can I show? Okay. So, uh, what I've done here is, suppose you don't know, you don't know the location. Actually, what I've done here is, I wanted to show everyone that how to install an RPM, RPM file manually, rather than doing yum update or yum install from the repository. Okay. So I was trying to show that. So for that purpose, I need to have an RPM file into my system so i know that what are all packages i have downloaded it's still sitting in my system it has not been deleted you can see all the packages which i have downloaded using yum update it's all here it's in the wire cache yum x Okay, dates, packages. These are all the packages you can see. So let me pick one package, I will install it. RPM space hyphen IVH space uh, where I need to give the location where dash yum x six seven what is that updates after that packages and then zlib let's see i am trying to install this zlib package I've given the RPM location of the RPM file. I am trying to run. Can't create transaction lock on this. Permission denied. It means I don't have admin privilege for doing this work. So I need to use sudo. You can see it's preparing and installed. Here it says preparing. Okay, here it says already installed. Okay, let me remove that. Yum, remove the lip. Sudo. No, I will not remove that. It has lots of dependency. Yeah, look, this this itself told that trying to remove system D, which is protected, trying to remove VM, which is protected. So I cannot I cannot remove the deadly because it has several dependency. So I need to find out some package name which is independent. Um, okay, open SSH. Let me remove. Open SSH hyphen server, which I have installed yesterday. Open SSH hyphen server. It should not have that much dependency. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't have it. It's going to remove only one package. I've removed it. Okay, it's got uninstalled. So for installation, 
uh, I will run this command sudo rpm hyphen ibh and I will give the package name here open ssh hyphen I need to see what is the exact name of that particular package. Open SSL is here. Why not this open SSH? It's not having SSH file. Open SSH, let me install from there itself. But have I cleared the cache yesterday? No. That's not appreciable. Okay, let me search in some other folder then. Fine. Yeah, I was explaining this command once. Let me explain and then go ahead. Uh, if I want to find out a file with a particular RPM, uh, with a particular name, the for that the command is sudo find sudo why i have added i will tell you later find and the source direct source directory name where i want to find and hyphen name is the not is the name of the file and i will give star dot rpm the star means it can be anything xyz dot rpm so i want to find out dot rpm file in the location of root i mean slash so root, uh, we may not have permission to access or to list out the file as well. Suppose if I give find it, find, it may throw lots of error that not able to find out the file because we don't have permission. Look, you, you can see that here. Last uh, six to seven lines, you can see the permission in it, permission in it, okay? So I don't know, I do have permission of that particular file uh, or the, of that particular location inside root or not. So for that purpose, I have given root, sudo. So it gave me all these, let's see. No, it's still not there. That's not good. Hmm. Okay, so what more i can example give you let me install it itself and see if i'm able to find out that particular package again or not mm. okay i'll try to find out this package has to be somewhere. This package, whatever this name is coming, open SSH server, this is sitting in the system. Sir, can we use to find the package uh, mlist all pipe grip the package name? Mm, I can give a try, let's see, but I'm not sure.
that's installed package. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to find out the install package. I'm trying to find out the location in my local system where that particular RPM file is sitting. You got my point? Okay, this information I can see here as well. Sir. Yeah. You can see uh, in front of here one package, what is the version and whether it's installed or not. All this you can see that. And if it's not installed, it will say something else that it's in the Anaconda repository or it's in the base repository like that. If it's installed, it will say installed. <clears throat> So my purpose here is different. I wanted to download a particular file, open SSH hyphen server, and I wanted to show you that. Okay, let me do it from here itself then. What was the version which we have been looking for? Okay, let's see here itself. Hyphen 7.4 B1. Hyphen 7.4 B1. <clears throat> oh, that open associate server that package itself is not available. Okay. Not able to copy anything or not? Let me see. Machine, take snapshot, view, copy paste option, it's not available. I need to no, I am not able to copy paste here. So I will type I think. Double get the space http colon double slash mirror dot centos dot org slash centos slash seven slash updates slash x six underscore sixty four slash packages slash such seven dot four p one Twenty-two dot EL underscore nine dot x thirty-six underscore sixty-four dot Oh, W gate is also not installed. Sir, can I know? Yeah, tell me. 
sir okay you are now you are downloading the rpm package right correct uh, so for Hello, sir. We can uh, mount. Uh, sir, we can mount uh, iOS images temporarily to an MNT no, sir. By using mount, uh, they will be wrong. Yes, I can mount, but I'm not sure whether I will be able to get from there or not. Yes, sir, is getting, sir. I have tried it. Okay. Anyways, I've downloaded it. You can see here. Open SSH server dot rpm. I have downloaded it here and uh, rpm space hyphen ivh space open SSH hyphen server. If I'm installing, it shows permission denied and uh, it's already installed. Now. Have I installed it again? No, I have removed the OpenSSH hyphen server. Yeah, I have installed it. Yeah, I know that. And I'm remove I'm installing it again now from that particular RPM packages. You can see that it's installing and it's installed now. Yeah, somebody was rightly saying that we can mount the CD ROM, whatever is there uh, at some place, and then we can uh, get the RPM packages from there. Yeah, that also we can do that, not a problem. Uh, so, okay, let me show the mount command itself. Devices, I have mounted the centers ISO, and after mounting, not mounting, after mounting, I need to wait, let me maximize this. Yeah. So whenever I have mounted a CD, it should have gone in, let me check, it is mounted somewhere or not. No, it's not mounted. Or this command will tell me, which are all mount command is going to tell me which are all file system has been mounted. So these are all file system. You can see proc is mounted in slash proc dev tempfs. There are several files and they have several use cases. So for some particular purpose, we use some particular file. So you can see that C group is used for several uh, groups of uh, services. Uh, is everyone is uh, getting my audio? Am I audible to everyone? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Then Pradeep, I think you might have some issue with your speaker or probably the audio device which you are using to listen. Because everybody is getting, then probably you might you might also be getting here. Okay, so see, uh, proc it's a file system which I have told you previously that it's getting used for uh, different process to get to know information about and different uh, hardware information of the system. 
sort of information we can yeah. give. Yes. Yes, Pradeep. I think you need to check with your uh, audio device. Yeah, so I'm back here. SL Linux FS. So uh, in Linux, everything is like a file system. I have told you. So for everything, they use as a file. So for here also, you can see that uh, uh, for uh, group uh, for managing this uh, C groups, they have mounted the file system uh, uh, in sys slash fs slash e group and then uh, there are several memory cpu devices cpu there are several things so why i came here yeah to show you the mount actually i wanted to try to see that which are all mounted the file systems are here and i'm not able to find out that mounted uh, cd rom whatever i have given so let me run another command mount slash dev slash cd yeah, cd rom so this is the uh, file uh, this mounted or uh, it pops up whenever i have connected any of the cd rom here and i will this is the source file location source device location and where i want it to mount that's the destination and i need to give the location so i am giving to giving that location in slash mnt everybody understand that what is the meaning of mount and slash, slash dev slash cd rom and then slash mnt slash so this slash dev slash cd rom it's a source and this is the destination so mount is an mount is a command which gives us which gives us uh, the device to be get mounted at a particular place or at a particular destination. So let me run. It's mounted and it's right protected. We have seen here. So now we can see the data of that particular file, where it is, what are all things are there. You can see that it's all MNT slash, it's all here. So as somebody told me that I can get the packages from here as well. Correct. So let me go here and uh, find out the packages, find out the RPM file where it is. Yeah, we have here packages. And uh, I'll grip for the open SSH. I have all these packages here. You can see that. So rather than getting from internet, I can I would have got from here as well. That's not a problem. Okay. So here I if were, uh, anyone is having any doubt so far, what all things I have explained. Okay, then somebody can tell me that what is the use of the script command? Sorry, sir, not telling. I asked that what is the use of uh, this script command I have uh, I've used here? To filter the specific file or folder repository. uh to filter out the uh, file or folder uh, uh grep command is used to uh find some 
match uh, pattern yes that correct okay. find some pattern is finding correct. a particular word yeah that's also correct somebody is texted that searching t string that's also correct uh, and so somebody has replied me on the first place that used to search file and folders no that's not correct it's not a file and folder it can be used for anything it can be a string it can be a pattern it can be text it can be anything now <clears throat> what is spike means here there is the symbol i have added <clears throat> and how i got this symbol it's just above the enter generally people don't use that particular symbol but here it's usable it's called pipe so the pipe here means like whatever is the output of this command will be get stored somewhere and from there we need to run this command from that particular file i'm going to search this open as a such string from that particular file so let's say if i'm running this command it will print this all this information it's going to print all this information and i need to find out the open ssh so by looking at each and every line and finding out open ssh it's very tough so what i have done is what i will do is i will add a pipe it means from the generated output of this command left side command i wanted to do something in the right so after output i wanted to extract a pattern extract a string so for that there is a command grip space uh, open ssh this is also works and uh, this will also work the difference is between the above and this is hyphen i argument and hyphen i is for ignore cases ignore cases means suppose so somewhere it's uh, it's a uh, capital or a small so in that case it gives me that uh, output as well like in in my in my uh, in my packages suppose uh, it has named as capital o small p small e and ssh and since i'm searching for only this open ssh it will not give me the output so to ignore the case ignore the capital or small i have added hyphen i and there are several arguments in grep you can you can explore that how to print uh, with line number how to print okay let's you can see that it's printing the line number as well so 2546 line open ssh hyphen client is there so that's the that's the use of that grip command and it's very powerful and we use at uh, multiple places and it's frequently used command i can say that yeah so before grip i was telling about rpm before rpm i was telling about mount file system mounting of file system okay since i mounted if i run the mount i should be able to see that location and which device i have mounted here i'm running the mount command right now and you can see the last line slash dev slash sr0 on mount uh, it's mounted on slash mnt it's iso 9600 that's the uh, iso file type it's read only real time so you can see that this device is mounted here if i connect any usb also it will be highlighted as slash dev slash usb 0 or something like that and it's uh, mounted at some place so if it's happening automatically it's good if it's not happening you need to do it uh, from here and uh, suppose 
Okay, we'll come back to F-stamp later. So, manual installation of the package also done here. Task automation. This is the cron tab. Actually, some time back I've told you like, uh, if I want to execute something in near future, what I can do. So I can, I can run a script. I can execute a particular command to, to be get executed in, in near future. So I can do that by using cron tab. And you can see that there are several files with cron name and those files are meant for suppose if you want to install a script daily oh, sorry if you want to run a script daily then you need to put that script here in this directory if you want to run a script uh, hourly you can uh, keep it here on weekly basis you can keep it here monthly basis you can keep it here and if you want to customize more then you can keep that particular you need to mention when what time you wanted to execute this is the more uh, this is the more precise way to execute that it's read only file so it will not give me the permission so i will need to modify it using sudo okay there's one more thing uh, uh so many new people are here uh who will not be who might not have been familiar with the command uh with the file editor here i'm using a vim in your normal windows you might be using a wordpad or notepad or notepad plus plus or maybe uh your microsoft office microsoft word to modify the files okay but here I'm using VI editor. So let me explain what is called a VI editor. VI it's an editor which runs in two modes. First, command mode. Second, whatever the command we are going to give. It runs in that mode. So I will edit that particular file like this. VI etc. Cron tab. I'm, I'm just, just opening that particular file. After opening, if I try to edit something, it will not give me the permission to edit anything. Because currently, whenever I open the file, it's in the command mode. So to go into the insert mode, I need to press I. And when I press I, you will be able to see, okay, let me press I. When I press I, you will be able to see below, this is in insert mode right now. So whatever I will write, it will get inserted here. Let me type something. Yeah, you can see here it's it's writing. Okay. And after writing, if you want me to save it and come back, then for that I need to I need to type a command. So for that I need to press escape, escape key, and then colon key, and then W. Q is for saving and exiting. If I don't want to save, I need to just simply give the colon Q. You can see below here, whenever I'm typing. Here at this place, you can see at the bottom. So I don't want to write because it will not be get written here. So I will just exit that file without saving it. Now what it says, no write since last change. Add exclamation mark to override so i need to exit with exclamation it is exited okay now i will run with vi command using sudo i have gone into now i want to edit so for that it's, it's in command mode i need to go in insert mode so i have pressed i after pressing i i need to give a command suppose i'm i want to 
reboot the system at now it's 8:53 i want to reboot the system by 8:54 okay so for that minute is 54 and that hour is 8 day it should do daily month it should do daily every month it should do every week what is the command i wanted to use a name is uh, root and the command i wanted to execute is reboot and i have press escape button but actually it's already 54 right now so let me give me the time for 55 and i am exiting and saving it up i can see it's still 53 54 let's see if it's getting executed at 54 or not what i've given yeah i've given 55 sorry not 54 So let's wait for a minute and see whether it's getting executed or not. Username. This is a new argument I can see here. This argument uh, doesn't used to come before, so I'm not sure how it behaves here. Let's see. So uh, it's uh, still fifty four thirty one. So let's wait for a minute. So similarly. we can give a uh, here we are seeing that this is a command reboot we can give a script here it's a location of a script to be get executed so suppose if you want to fetch the log if you want to copy the log if you want to copy a file from one system to another server so for doing all those remote work okay you can see that system has got rebooted on its own okay it has got here because i have plugged in the image i have plugged in the iso file and that's the reason it has got it here let me remove the iso file and let me reboot the file okay anyways it's automatically going to boot so it will boot in 36 why to wait for that let's reboot from here itself yeah so everybody has seen that uh, how it is getting uh, executed that reboot command has executed on its own so you can execute whatever you want according to your need you can suppose you being an uh, linux admin person if you want to copy the log from one server to another server each and every time 12 at a night even though if you are not there you wanted to copy some of the logs so you can add a script which can do that job and uh, you can do that job and you can do that job by writing a script and adding that script into that cron job uh, cron tab everybody got this point whatever i explained just now okay let me give an example suppose i'm using a centos 1 and uh, centos 2 also i will turn on but before that I need to change the setting. Wait, don't turn on. I want to change the setting from NAT to Bridge. NAT work, NAT Bridge. Okay, start.
so let it be start uh, meanwhile we will write a script okay so that what is my what one second it came just a second remove windows apps yeah so what is my purpose what i wanted to show here to you guys that uh, this is centos 1 and this is centos 2 uh, suppose centos 2 is my server where i keep all the logs where i store all the logs centos 2 and centos 1 is a system uh, on which the server is running but i wanted to save the log at some place so for that what i will do i'll i'll use a copy command remotely so what is the copy command uh, to copy files from one place to another place remotely i will show you that it's called scp secure copy scp takes the source and takes the destination source location and destination location okay so destination location i don't know because i don't know ip of this particular system so let me log in here okay in right side i have centos i have centos 1 and in left side i have centos 2 okay so what is my job here or what i'm trying to do here is ls slash var slash log slash D message. I want this file to be get copied all the time to my left side server because this is the this I this D message log. I think it's a crucial log and it has to be saved somewhere remotely. So this is the uh, system I have identified. So for that, I know the source location. That source location file is where log D message. I wanted to copy and I I need to know the destination. But destination is in remote. So for that, I need to know the IP address of the IP address of that on the next system. So to get to know the IP address of the next system, I need to log in here with the credential test and then IP address show. It also doesn't have the IP. DH client hyphen v e m p zero s three okay permission denied goes for sudo centers get the ip from one yeah so this system has got the ip is 192 168 okay look everybody can see here this is the ip address this is the IP address of this system 192.168.101.9. So now I know the destination address and uh, destination address I know PWD. I will copy, I will try to copy in test folder. Okay. In left side, I have seen that there's nothing. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to copy scp space slash var slash log slash the message. This is the file, source file, and now the destination is 192.168.101.9. After that, I need to location in this IP where I wanted to copy. For that, I need to give the colon then slash home slash test. I wanted to copy in test directory. Now, through which user I'm going to log in? This also I need to use. So test is a user at the rate test at the at, at this IP. Logging through test user 
at this IP and this is the location where you need to copy. So before the location, I need to add the column. And if I hit enter, network is unreachable. 192.168.101.9 Why it's unreachable? Why? Okay, I've restarted it. Now I am able to ping. So uh, now I will run the SCP command to copy. I need to press yes for the first time. And then it is trying to copy the file now it's asking for the password this is asking for the password this time it's asking for the password of another user of this user it's asking for the pass password of this user so i will give the password it's copied now we will go to the left side panel and send us to, to server and we will see what is is there any file or not we, we can see that here when I typed as ls, there is no file. Now you can see that there is a file called the message. Okay. What I want is, okay, let me remove this file again, rm-rf, the message. Now what I want is, I want to copy this file all the time. at some particular point of time to another server so for that what i will do okay it's an assignment for you guys like type a command not now uh, i will send you an assignment like uh, my source uh, ip is this one and uh, my source location is this destination ip is this destination location is this and i wanted to copy one file at this particular point of time every day every month so what would be the cron job for this i'll send in an assignment and uh, you'll be replying me on that okay and what is the next topic oh okay anybody has any doubt in this cron, jo cron job a cron tab job. Okay, so Hello. yes. Hello. Sir, we are taking the log files into one one point to another point. Every mm -hmm. time that file will updated or come copy yes. the entire content from the source for source location. Since you're copying the file, then definitely it's going to take the entire content. But okay. suppose there are multiple files, like in this folder itself. In this uh, where log folder itself, there are multiple files. You can see that files, all these files. So there is a command called rsync. This is not here, rsync package has not been installed, but by using rsync, you can, you can, you can copy only the changed files. If one file is still not changed, suppose dmessage.old is copied and written something. Okay. And next day, if you come, this dmessage.old is not going to be changed. Now, after that, dmessage.old.1 file will be get created out of this dmessage. Okay. So in that case, dmessage.old file is going to be the same. So if I use scp command, what I've used, what I've shown you right now, 
which will copy all the file again and again, again and again. So to avoid copying the no unmodified file again and again, you should use rsync command. So rsync, what it will do? It will check the file timestamp file size, and if the file size and timestamp got changed, it will simply copy the file. If it's not changed, it will not copy the file. Okay. So generally, okay, rsync generally rsync use to be get used. So I will suggest everybody Sir? to, uh, or just wait. So I will suggest everybody to look at the rsync command also. That how to use rsync command. Yes, go ahead. So rsync only updated the uh, just it's copying the updated uh, lines only, right? It's not copying not the lines. whole. Uh... Not lines. It's not going to copy the updated lines. It's going to copy the updated files. Ah, yeah, updated files only. Yeah, not lines. Yeah, uh, it's not going to copy the old file which is not modified. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. <clears throat> yeah. So I'll suggest everybody. Uh, anybody has any doubt now? So I'll suggest everybody to look at the rsync command as well. Okay. Now coming to the kernel modules. Kernel, it's uh, what is what is kernel uh, here? Uh, in any Linux system, kernel is a software which takes care of your low level all the resources. And at first place, before your GUI comes up, your kernel has to be successfully boot up. Without kernel, you don't. There is no existence of GUI. There is no existence of anything. Kernel is the one who has. Who has all the privilege, all the software codes to give you all the information, whatever you needed to run the GUI or the operating system perfectly. So all the driver goes into that kernel space or in that kernel only. So I can check the driver installed already in my system by using this command ls mode. These are all the drivers. These are all the drivers installed and how many people are using. You can see zero is using. Video, zero person is using. IP tables, five people are using here. Five, 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 further more five drivers or five resources are using. IP tables underscore security, IP tables underscore filter, IP tables underscore mangle, it's all getting used. Okay, so suppose if a driver is creating problem, Okay, CD room uh, is again a driver which is getting used by SR underscore mode. Let me disconnect this CD room. Let me disconnect this CD room and see if anything is changes here. So, what is my purpose is to show you that this driver. CD ROM, which is getting used by one people, one person, and the person name is SR underscore mode. Here, the person means the driver or, or, or any, any agent which can utilize this driver inside this operating system. Okay, person name, it doesn't mean that any physical person or any other user here. So, let me unmount that particular driver. Sorry, that particular device it's not connected actually so how i can remove this disk itself uh can i modify the settings the storage no i cannot remove this sorry i cannot remove this cd drive alone So I cannot remove, if I cannot remove, I cannot uh, remove the device also. Okay, so I'll choose a device which is not getting used by somebody and I will try to 
remove that particular driver and show you that how to remove a driver. So, video. Okay, let's uh, remove the video itself, but I'm not sure what could be the consequences of removing the driver video. Let me check some other driver if I am able to identify battery low, just a second. Hmm. So IP underscore set. Okay, IP underscore set is a module. So any driver, I can call that as a driver or I can call that as a module as also. Okay, as a developer, I can call it as a module. It because in uh, uh, in developer's language, it's a kind of module only. And what type of module it's? It's a driver module. So for that, I need to use sudo and the command for removing a module or removing a driver is rmmod space with that particular argument. What uh, with that particular module? What is the module? I wanted to remove IP underscore set set. You can see that IP set is not used by anybody here. This is the IP underscore set and it is not used by anybody. And this is the size actually, size of that particular driver. 45799. Let me do that. And uh, it doesn't throw any error, it means it has got removed. Let me check with the LS mode hyphen more. We don't have that, correct? IP underscore set, we don't have. We can grip also LS word, grip hyphen I, IP underscore set. We don't have it. We don't have. So for uh, installing that particular driver again, I need to use mode probe IP underscore set. With using pseudo permission and which says that it has installed if it's not throwing any error. And I can check once again. What is the output you can see that ip underscore set here you can see that ip underscore set module right now it's got installed but before it was not installed so more probe is a command to install a module uh, so sorry to interrupt you Oh, yes, certainly. Ha. Uh, guys, I have shared one link in the chat box. Everyone need to fill this link, okay? And uh, today we do the formality for the bond and other process which I will make you explain. Please check your email because I'll be sharing a meeting link today for the evening. So all of you, please join the meeting link. And today is the final list which I am going to prepare who the people who will continue with the batch right so make sure the attendance should be 100 percent every day it should not be that a candidate is joining today then he's taking a leave for two days then again he is joining after two days so you need to be serious because as you can understand that this is an intensive training batch and you'll be allocated with the projects and assignments as well this conference will now be recorded so this is the way we can install a module or we can remove a module and uh, or we can install a driver or remove a driver from the kernel. There is one more command called ins mode. Uh, 
ins mode and then uh, you need to give the driver module let's say some star dot ko file it can be any any anything so like this we can install, we can insert a module and the location of the module where it is located actually that location is i can give you the location where all the drivers are located of this particular operating system is um yeah lib modules and then kernel version okay let me check you appear in which kernel i am into i am into 1160 okay lib modules then 31160 dot dot el7 okay and after that kernel then drivers what kind of driver suppose if i go to network driver you can see all this ko dot xz you can see that on left side it's all the compressed ko file the driver extension in linux is represented by dot ko so whenever you see a dot ko file you can say that it's a driver it's a kernel object so whenever you want to install you can install by using that dot uh, ko file and uh, the command for that you can use is ins mode so here the ins mode command what is the difference in between ins mode and mode probe ins mode is also going to install a module mode probe is also going to install a module ins mode is going to simply install a module mode probe is going to search the dependency of that module and install all the mod all the dependent modules as well so these are the two or uh, these are these are the difference in between mode probe and ins mode and this is how you can install a module and remove a module but make sure that you don't remove any unwanted module because re removing module may crash your system may leave you unresponsiveness sorry may leave you unresponsive your system so don't remove until unless you don't know what you're doing so that's it for the today's class i will start the recording this conference will now be recorded okay so we will understand the explanation of uh yum or any repository how it works in normal linux so normal linux when you installed uh it may be you think that uh, you have you have a linux you have a linux box here sitting and uh I'm trying to draw a rectangle. Yeah. And in that, you wanted to install some of the software. So for software, installing software, it has to uh, go through the repository. Suppose in your in your phone, when you get a new phone, what do you do? you open a play store and uh, go to the play store and uh, click on a search for the whatsapp or search for the facebook or search for any particular software and you click on install and it get installed correct yes sir so yes sir. so to that i am calling it's a repository of the softwares google play it's a repository of all the apk files all the softwares which you can get get and install it in your phone similarly we have a repository for all the linux distribution which is maintained by that particular distribution or uh, 
the particular company who is releasing the distribution distribution and it's not only by them it is located or it is uh yes maintained by them but it has been placed at so many location in the world in india also it might be at four to five locations uh and in the, in the whole world there are multiple location of those repositories so what is actually in those repository in those repository softwares are kept whatever line i'm drawing suppose just think that it's a software it's software kept software kept all these files are kept in this repository and there will be one file which stores the metadata of all the files it is stored some metadata of this file as well this file so if i download this file it will have all the information of currently the residing packages in this repository okay so when we do apt sorry when we do yum space update it's going to download only this file which has the metadata information i'm talking about yum update okay it downloads the metadata file only from uh, this file and uh, after downloading it checks what are all packages is installed in this linux system i run the yum update from this linux system and it installed or it's downloaded this metadata package uh this file metadata files are uh, and after downloading it checks what is the packages listed here in this metadata you are able to see the pencil correct here or no yes sir yes sir okay yeah so uh, what are all the metadata or what are all the packages uh, the name and the size it's or the version it's present here it's going to compare with the same file which is sitting in this linux linux system so if it's find if it's found that yum found that the setting uh, linux package is older than whatever it has got from the repository then what it will it will do it will download that particular package and install that package okay suppose let's say an example in here in linux system open ssh uh, 2.x is here i'm just given an example it's already installed 2.x a uh, 2.x means it's a version uh, the uh, to identify a version i'm using this and suppose in repository i have 3.x so when i do apt uh, sorry yum update it's going to download this file and after downloading this file it will check that open ssh package what is installed it's 2.x and uh, i am having 3.x so what it will do it will just download and up it's just download and update the open ssh and install it after installing when you will check the version it will it would have already became 3.x okay so yum actually it's a package manager which fetches the repository from remote now yum remove is going to remove the repo, remove a particular software from your system and uh, the package which is going to be get downloaded for centos or for rel it has an extension of .rpm it doesn't download .deb if you download deb and if you try to install it will not get installed so deb is an extension for debian packages uh, the distribution which follows the debian uh, packaging list or debian packaging they can install the .deb file not the rpm so centos oracle or uh, or rel this it's all maintained by sorry it's all supported by rpm package so that is yum uh, that's about uh, that's all about yum now coming back to rpm suppose you this linux system is uh this linux system uh can uh, this linux system is a centos which currently we are using 
and in this centos we have an rpm sitting in my laptop here it has named as xyz.rpm suppose okay and i wanted to install this xyz.rpm then for that what i need to do i need to run a command rpm space hyphen ivh space that particular package name so by running an ip rpm command it's going to install the rpm which is sitting locally it's not going to fetch anything from the online or from the repository or anywhere else now you may you are able to make the difference in between rpm command and yum um, uh, sir, so yum command in yum command we need to we need not to uh, means give the path. Yes, you need not to give the path. The path has already been mentioned in slash yum slash it sorry slash etc slash yum slash repos dot d. I can show you and, right away. Yes, and in uh, rpm command mm -hmm. we have to uh, fire that command from that path only. Correct. RPM is actually used for installing any RPM packages locally. You can see this is the base and uh, <clears throat> this is the location this is the location of the uh, repository from where it's downloading okay it is a repo file uh, it's not a repo file it's a repository location online repository location from where it's downloading currently mirror list okay you can enable or disable by a flag uh, you can see this enable flag enable is zero it means this repository is disabled you can enable it by enabling one similarly you can add enable zero in this so this repository or this link you can disable it similarly you can enable or disable any particular repository okay so this okay, is sir. yeah this is when you need a package to be get received or to be get updated or to be get installed from the repository any repository repository can be in your local repository you can set up in your cd also repository can be set up in online also like this whatever it's shown here but in case if you are holding a package rpm package and if you want to install that rpm package alone then yes you need to run the command rpm uh, space hyphen ivh ivh you can see the uh, flag in rpm slash help what are all the commands what are all the meaning of hyphen ivh v for verbose i for install and what is the h meaning here mm. H is hash. Yeah, so it, it, it prints the hash also uh, corresponding to that particular uh, package. In, in fact, if you don't use H, that's not a problem. But yes, I is must to use. V you can use to get the output, uh, uh, what are all logs it's throwing uh, while installation. So V is helpful. I is 
for sure you have to use so understood the difference between uh, yum and yes active. sir yes sir okay 